What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Yango Show. Today we are talking about a variety of topics that are happening in the WWE. We got some major plans and some major rumors for WWE Crown Jewel. Plus, we're going to talk a little bit more about a special debut that happened on WWE NXT. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys want more videos like this, all you got to do is just click that subscribe button. And don't forget, we go live Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern. This week, we will be taking a break from the live streams because I'll be working the coverage for TNA Bound for Glory. Uh, but with that being said, let's just jump right into it. I want to kick things off with Zarya. Um, if you guys didn't know, Zarya made her WWE NXT debut to end the show last night on NXT. And maybe some of you guys aren't familiar with who Zarya is, but that is actually the new name for the former Delta Brady. Uh, Delta is a pro wrestling standout from Australia who has been given vignettes week after week on WWE NXT, which by the way, let me just make it very clear, WWE's vignettes for Delta have been absolutely incredible to watch, very cinematic feel, very movie trailer-esque, and the reality is WWE has just knocked it out completely out of the park when it comes to presenting new stars, especially ones such as Delta. You know, her name has often been associated with the new signings, like we have seen with Julia and Stephanie Vakur. A lot of people may not be as familiar with Delta as they are with the other two, um, but WWE actually had her debut. The name is Zarya, and on top of that, WWE has actually filed for a trademark for the name. Uh, so the name is spelled Z-A-R-I-A. -A. It is obviously for entertainment services uh, and obviously for performances by a professional wrestler. In this case, the former Delta Brady is now known as Zarya. Listen, I thought the debut was great. We should expect to see her at WWE Halloween Havoc. And it looks like, based on what we've seen, it looks like she could be setting her sights on Kalani Jordan, which I think this could be really, really fun. I think for WWE, it is incredibly important that they figure out how to do title changes. You know, you don't want to have incredibly long title reigns all the time, but this is one of those scenarios where I think if you are the WWE, you are going to try and switch it up a little bit. They need a dominant heel in the women's division. Roxanne and Cora Jade are great heel characters, but I'm talking about someone who is dominant, and it is very clear that Zarya is coming in as a big-time heel. And then I think when you look at WWE's main event picture for the women's division, it is incredibly stacked as well. So the cool thing about Zarya coming in is that this allows her to get some repetition, you know, like let her get in the ring, let her do some things in the WWE, let the audience get acclimated to her. And then as she holds the women's North American championship, you can actually utilize that as an opportunity to build her up correctly to go up against Julia or Stephanie Vakur or whoever may be holding the belt. Another topic that I want to discuss, guys, WWE has some potential plans for Dominic Mysterio versus Rhea Ripley, which this is a very interesting thing that has been brought to our attention. Uh, Wrestle Votes stated on the Q&A uh, with Sports Kita, he says that I know it's been brought up. Unfortunately, I don't know how high it's been made. But there is a real desire on some level of creative to do the match before the angle fizzles out. Yes. Russell Votes also goes on to say, I don't know how far down the table it went. From a lower end, yes, there's anticipation of getting something out of this. Um, obviously, this is something really, really, really cool if you think about it. Intergender wrestling doesn't typically happen in the WWE. And specifically in this situation, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, and my personal opinion, and I don't think this is a very popular opinion, but I do feel like since the split from the Judgment Day with obviously Damien Priest and Rhea Ripley, I do feel in a certain sense that perhaps the WWE's Judgment Day right now is losing a little bit of steam. And, you know, I understand that Raquel was brought in there to kind of fix things and change some things. Um, but I just don't like this variation of the group. Honestly, I'm not very intrigued by it. I think it would actually benefit from everybody splitting away. Um, you got to do this match while the angle's hot. <laughs> I swear, man. I, I, I honestly, guys, listen, I'm going to tell you like it is. Dominic Mysterio is off to doing big things in the WWE. I feel like the more he's associated with this Judgment Day thing, like it just kind of, it's a little too much repetitiveness. I think this kid's got a lot of skill, a lot of great abilities. 
I think the way it's all going to pan out is that Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio actually having a match could be a really good thing. It would be actually really awesome, too, for Rhea Ripley to defeat and dominate Dominic Mysterio, like just completely obliterate him. And then on top of that, you could do, because he loses to Rhea Ripley, he can't take care of it. He can't stop Liv Morgan. You know, he can't help Liv Morgan at this point. I think Liv Morgan also breaks his heart. And I think this would actually be a really cool way to go about it. And then this way, Dominic Mysterio is away from the Judgment Day. I actually want to see the Judgment Day just disband, like, very quickly. So I want to see Carlito gone from the group, kicked out. I want to see JD McDonough and Finn Balor drop the tag titles, and then they fizzle out of the group. And then I think if you look at Raquel, Liv, and Dom, that's the final piece. So in this situation, what you actually have is a really good, compelling story, because if Dominic Mysterio were to lose to Rhea Ripley, then you find yourself in a situation where Liv Morgan doesn't feel like Dominic is actually valuable at all, and then she breaks up with him. And then if you're Dominic Mysterio, you are alone. You're lonely and you're sad. I mean, you screwed over Rhea and now Liv Morgan screwed over you because all Liv Morgan wanted was the championship. And I just think this could be really compelling TV. I think a lot of people would enjoy it. And that brings us to our final topic, guys. WWE does have plans for Goldberg's return. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think people are going to like this. Uh, So... Dave Meltzer has reported that Goldberg vs. Gunther is not scheduled for Survivor Series or WrestleMania, okay? So that's one thing that you guys need to know. However, on the flip side of that, on Backstage Pass Q&A, WrestleVotes uh, and SportsKita said, uh, basically, I don't know for sure, but there are plans for Goldberg in the future. And one of the rumors is that at Crown Jewel, Goldberg might be the one to screw over Gunther, Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, guys. Honestly, if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think you should have any involvement in that match. It is Saudi Arabia, Crown Jewel. Goldberg has definitely worked the the Saudi Arabian WWE pay-per-views, so it's not necessarily a shocker if he was there. But to have him get involved and screw over Gunther, I think, like, yes, it is logical by any means. I get it. It is logical based on what happened at Bad Blood, based on what happened on WWE Raw. I understand the logic of it making sense. I just personally wouldn't lead with this. I would have Cody Rhodes and Gunther go out there and have like a really good, lengthy, clean match. Um, And then if you want to have Goldberg come out, I mean, if you really, really want him to come out, you can have him do some post-match stuff with Gunther. But I want to see the match end clean. That's my personal opinion on it. WWE is going to bring back Goldberg. Goldberg, if if he puts over Gunther, I'm okay with it. If Goldberg is coming back and not putting over anybody and this is just him getting his way to retire, then quite frankly, guys, I'm going to be very disappointed. But if he's putting over Gunther, ultimately, I am fine with it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is today's episode of The Ango Show.